Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, today I want to talk about this game again, Robocop vs Terminator. This game is probably one of the biggest ones of my formative teenage years, mainly being because I was very much a computer game nerd. Of course I am, I wouldn't be running a YouTube channel otherwise, but this game was one of the first games that I played that wasn't just a great movie license, but it was a complete leap forward in the sense of mature computer games. Don't get me wrong, one of the first truly mature games ever for uh, my Mega Drive at the time and my Master System was of course Mortal Kombat. And we will talk about comparisons later on on the channel about those games. But the reason I'm going to talk about this today is Robocop vs Terminator, as great a game as it was on both the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, both of them took very different directions, even though both games, as you can see from the top, were both made by Virgin. Both of them utilise um, both popular licences, um, both the Robocop film licence and the Terminator film licence, both movies of which, I have to add, are 18 certificates. Yet this game was made available to people younger, which kind of toes a line now when you think about it, because parents buying computer games for their children did they buy this game because they liked those films and then they gave it to their children to enjoy? Or do we just face it that the under 18 year olds were watching these films and therefore they wanted to play this game? Whether that's you know true or false, who knows? Are Sega, Nintendo or Virgin Games? But what I want to do today is talk about the two premier versions of this game for both the Super Nintendo, sorry, the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive and see how they compare, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and maybe even discover which one of these two is better. So without further ado, let's get started on the SNES version. Downplaying the music there. Here we have the title screen, let's give it a bit more volume, shall we? So the title screen here, a little bit more anime, a little bit more cartoony, um, you know, standard password, etc. But the big change between these two, as far as SNES is concerned, is their game was far more narrative driven. Both games are action packed, but as you can see from that SNES version, it was it has the whole storyboard development. It has a narrative that's driven forward in a far more acceptable, pleasing, and palatable way than you're going to see on the Mega Drive. Of course, the Mega Drive has its strengths that we will talk about, but. On the screen here, we have getting the, the story of Robocop versus Terminator and how they come to loggerheads. So let's carry on watching, shall we? Once again, the SNES didn't go for speed here. My understanding is we're watching something from the future here. And we send this fellow back in order to save the future. So, the whole John Connor argument, really. So, before Skynet, before Terminator, before the war, there was Robocop, apparently. Here we go. Again, gone for the real dark starter package there. And again, I like this whole comic book um, attitude, even with the little pop over and the floats over that you would expect from comics, is delivered in the narrative form of this game. They've definitely gone for a far different method uh, than uh, the Sega Mega Drive game we're gonna look in a moment. Just explaining the story there. Also, it's worth mentioning that they introduced the story prior, I mean, after the start screen, whereas in the Mega Drive one, different order entirely. This is one of the longest opening scenes I've ever played. Ever. To be honest, at least it builds up the tension. It builds up how much you care about the characters. And there we have Robocop shooting like crazy. So straight away, great sound quality there on that first level. First thing you may have noticed that, um, straight away is even though he's just shot a rocket into the face of a woman there and shot a load of bullets into the body of another, no blood. We will touch on that later on. 
but the pace of the game, there's no denying it, this is the slower of the two. We will have them t the two running side by side later on, but the SNES version of this game, the sound, hard to say what we think of the sound at this stage, it's too early on in the comparison. But the idea, there's lots of extra sprites in this as well. Lots of the background sprites, there's a good, there's a good mix of um, both dimensions here with layered uh, aggressors across enemies. In the Mega, uh, Mega Drive version, it's very two dimensional point to point activity. But we did just see a bit of pavement, the pavement get absolutely demolished there. So. The, you know the level itself I'm not sure how I feel about the look of Robocop in this I'm not sure if he looks very much like Robocop remember both of these games were made by Virgin Games together so it's the, if it wasn't the same team of people you could probably argue it was the same designers for the most part and the layouts of the levels are relatively similar although the way the levels deviate is a much bigger question even when your character gets hit there's that slight ready after effect whereas in the Mega Drive version impact and how your character integrates uh, interacts with people once you touch them is very very uh, very different and here we go here we have a terminator which we've just seen defeated so once again that was the first level of the snes version it's again far more cartoony it's given a uh, far more drive towards uh, the narrative. Well, now we're going to look at the Mega Drive version. And again, I've mentioned it in other videos. One of my favourite introductions of any game. Far more upbeat music. But no storyboards this time. They go for very much a words on paper kind of introduction here. It does go on a bit, I'll be honest, but have a good read. Sorry, I do love this game. I do love this music. Again, not playing favourites. It's only because I've played... The Mega Drive version is a game that I played in my teens, whereas the SNES version I played about two years ago, uh, and obviously recently. But nevertheless, I, I just... I prefer the music of the Mega Drive version. It's got more edge to it. It kind of really puts you in the frame of mind. That background look, looks worryingly similar to Streets of Rage, though. I'll go as far as to say. Once again, long, long story. Probably the majority of the beginning of Robocop vs Terminator for the SNES is laid out in just text form here, but there's very, there's not much of a reference towards someone jumping back in time and all that sort of stuff and individual Terminator's orders. Wasn't that the most aggressive opening you've ever seen to a game? And here we go, so you've got your prime directives, the level starts. Straight away, blood. Huge difference there in terms of gore on the screen. So much more going on on screen. We'll talk about that later on as well. But the game itself just moves a lot quicker in every regard. It doesn't have that extra tier of depth with the enemies, but what you do have is a lot more gore. Same, well, same weapon, so it should be said, but better audio as well, I think. Um, not just the gun audio either, but the every the characters' voices. It's just a much more um, immersive gaming experience. Now, the, the one probably could argue there is an unnecessary amount of blood, and what this comes down to is that idea we were talking about before about the video game industry hadn't really reached maturity by the time computer games had become so um, at this level of mainstream. So a lot of the technology and indeed the companies behind these games, they, you know, the games they were creating, they could get away with a lot more. Obviously as the 90s progressed, censorship really took in, I took on board and then gore and violence and stuff like that, as well as the licensing of characters within games. And look at that guy, he fell apart. So there we are at the end of the level. So what we'll do is we'll get that SNES one up and running as well. And now we can see these two games running at exactly the same time. So once again, the SNES has definitely gone for a far more narrative driven game. Do you know what? Let's keep let's keep the Mega Drive one pause just for a little bit longer. Um, the you see the um, SNES version there. 
because it relies so heavily on the narrative to disguise a lot of that um, speed in the game, the pace of the game is very, very different. And once we got the two running side by side, it will very, it will that point will be very much demonstrated. But it should be mentioned that the plot is good. The plot for the SNES version is far, far superior. Not only in terms of the plot itself from the beginning, but the plot all the way to the end and the way the games end a little bit different too. Now, they actually made comic books of this pairing as well, which is quite interesting. But the plot of those comics is so, so much in line with the SNES version more than the Mega Drive. The Mega Drive seems um, far, far more based on that action element, that arcade action feeling, rather than the narrative. So if you're a sort of person that really enjoys the narrative of your computer games, then chances are you're gonna love the SNES version more. The, the Sega Mega Drive one ran better, more uh, ran better with more on screen going on, and was faster overall with the sound and the impact kind of nature of a lot of Sega Mega Drive games, but it just doesn't drive, that you're not driven forward narrative-wise and with the plot as you are with the SNES version. Luckily, the Mega Drive one plays damn well, so it's okay. You do get away, but once again, if plot is your point, the SNES version is the winner for you. But let's see how this, it's a long, long story, isn't it? How long have I been talking for? Um, let's see if we've got this carrying on here. When your mind, good Lord. So, the, you know, I mean, right now this is tearing me up a little bit because as much as I enjoy plot, and I really do enjoy a good narrative in any computer game, I've still got to say that this is going alarmingly slow. Even the time between each bubble is just too long. Um, anytime you want to finish, Robo, just move it along, move it along. So there you go. Levels completed. You do actually have that nice little gun animation, but I'm still very surprised that we had to wait this long. Renegade, air turn on unit, blah, blah, blah. So there we go, there's our next level. And let's have them running side by side, shall we? So again, very similar level design to the previous level, so we're not gonna say anything. But luckily, we've got the spinny gun thing there as well, if you don't press anything for a while. So once you see the two games running side by side, you can see that extra speed that you're getting in the Mega Drive one that I keep banging on about. I know I'm coming across as a broken record. Now, Ed 209 there, straight away, on the right, on the SNES version, not only is he running around the level, but you get hold of his gun, something that's a lot harder to do and doesn't come anywhere near as quickly as that in the Sega version of the game. We do deal with Ed 209, but much, much later in the level. Um, whereas in the SNES version, that is thrown at you pretty early on. It's a shame we can't get the two, and there you go, the SNES level is already over. Um, so all of that, that level probably was, what, one, you know, a 20th of the length, or, you know, 20% of the length of that initial cutscene. So if we get that SNES version pause now, and we take a look at the Mega Drive version, again, the weapons, it's exactly the same weapons, really. Even the deployment and the usage of those weapons <coughs> is exactly the same. So we can't really compare them on that note. After we see the end of the boss, when we see Ed 209 in all of his glory for the second Mega Drive, I'll walk through some of the trivia about these games and one of their way, some of the many ways in which one does uh, differ more than the other. Now you see a power up there being used on screen, an awful power up I might add, something that almost ruins this game. Also the blood effects when you're using a flamethrower is a little bit weird but I won't have a go. Now this is a strange weapon on the screen here, basically as you move the screen up, down, left and right, the missile stayed with you. So th that was a nice weapon insofar as you could ch chop and change the direction of the bullet as needed. Very useful for later bosses like uh, the Robocop 2 boss, Kane. But once again, horrific amounts of gore, horrific amounts of death in this game so far. I don't, I don't have any children. I probably wouldn't let them play this game for a long time. But we'll carry on here. We've got someone uh, trying to get all of the hostages, I believe, perhaps. But we have a sheer mind-boggling amount of death happening here on screen. Ah, hostages. Still more hostages saved. Lovely. No, I, I do enjoy this game. But, my God, it's gory. 
Obviously by today's standards we would argue it's not anywhere near as bad as the number of games we play these days, but we can't compare this by modern standards. We have to remember this game was a mid-90s game, and therefore you have to judge it as so, and there were no games like this at that time. I like the fact that you can still maintain the usage of those crazy bullets, even when you're using a different gun. He's had these bullets on screen for a while, I'm quite impressed. Ah, and there's that boss character, who we've killed in an alarmingly quick fashion. So of course now, once we've defeated a lot of this, we have got the Terminator. So now we finally encounter the Terminator here. Obviously the Terminator seems to be dying considerably harder uh, than he did on the SNES version when he died really, really easy. But the guy just seems to get up and get down again. And there you go, that was the end of the Terminator. So what we'll do is we'll go through the rest of the game, we'll leave that whole game playing in the background there. We might have to turn the volume down a bit so we can enjoy ourselves and keep things moving. But ultimately, these games do compare very well, but what you want to know is how do they differ? So let's talk about how these two games differ. Now, well, let's get that sound down, shall we? Because that's only going to be a pain, isn't it? Bear with me, bear with me. So, once again, these games were released almost exactly the same time. I believe it wasn't even a month difference between the release on both platforms. Both of them run and gun shooters, but of course, as mentioned, the SNES one, far more narrative driven. Look at the Ed 209 gun ripping it up there. Whereas in the Mega Drive version, it was very much about the action over the narrative. Now, the SNES version has a, it's gone through a bizarre spectrum when it comes to those graphics. They don't really look like the movie. They look far more like the, an anime or even the comic books of uh, Robocop vs. Terminator. Whereas the Robocop featured in the Mega Drive version there, I would go as far as to say looks far, far more like the movie that we're used to seeing or that, that the children shouldn't have seen if they're under 18. Um, now, the first person level in the game, there is one later on that utilises uh, Mode 7, which is quite impressive from uh, SNES utilizing that technology in that mode 7 of course being used in a number of games at that point i believe star fox is uh, one of the biggest contenders um on top of that the cutscenes themselves being very thought-provoking in some cases and also being you know good enough to be a movie in any of themselves whereas in the mega drive version for the most part what you get is non-stop text which isn't great now of course the snares isn't great in every regard snares version the enemy respawning is ridiculous if you kill an enemy walk away come back that enemy will respawn instantaneously it makes retreat borderline impossible on top of that the music is nowhere near as good on that snes version as it is to the mega drive the mega drive music just has more of a bite to it it's far more what i would expect from a movie in some of the more dramatic scenes of um, of those movies and lastly the snes version doesn't require that many enemies before things on screen start to slow down. If you look at the sheer number of enemies on screen any given time in the SNES version, they will always be lower. Because the uh, SNES really did start to struggle if there was more than about four enemies on screen, whereas the Mega Drive could go much, much harder than that and still be okay. If we look at the Mega Drive screen now, we're going to be looking at Robocop 2. Uh, taking uh, taking him on there now uh, the Mega Drive version obviously the game runs so so much more faster um, it's not only uh, much much faster but the graphics are far more um, in keeping with the franchise I think but that can just be an opinion but I do think they've kept a standard there with regards to the graphics themselves on top of that there's more weapons apparently in the Mega Drive version I spent a lot of the time thinking they were the same weapons but no there are actually more weapons like the laser uh, and the controllable bullets that we saw, the uh, little grenades on screen, something that you don't get on the SNES version. Um, next, the sound quality is just better. It is, let's face it, it isn't just about the music itself, but the delivery of a lot of that music that is just better on the SNES, um, and, uh, on the Mega Drive, sorry. But of course, it isn't all good. Namely, um, far, far um, weaker storyline overall. The storyline is just, it's not that it doesn't make sense, of course it makes sense, but whereas in the SNES version they fill in everything for you about the time travel elements, about um, a um, person coming from the future, in the Mega Drive you had to read about it and then you had to just remember it, whereas the SNES between every level takes the opportunity to just remind you of the narrative, introducing new elements and more. 
Um, lastly, even though the game does stutter when there's lots more characters on screen um, than the snares, whereas the snares will start to stutter with far fewer, it should be mentioned that when things go wrong, they go wrong, m wrong much, much worse on the Mega Drive. Because when things go, um, when there's too many characters on screen in the snares, what we experience is a little bit of slowdown on a game that's not exactly fast paced. Whereas on the Mega Drive version, we get sprites flickering in and out and we see real performance problems all the time. And you can, you know, lose your life in this game very quickly indeed, just thanks to some of those errors. But overall, both games are very, very good indeed. Let's look, listen to some of that music, shall we? Let's see how the two musics compare. So first things first, the Mega Drive music. Now it should be said, even though the music is very, very good, I do think it's worth mentioning that there is a far, there's a big degree of repetition about the music in the Mega Drive. There is um, a core selection of about five or six songs that are heavily featured in the Mega Drive version. The Snares version seems to have more music, but it isn't hugely inspiring. So let's listen to some of the Snares music and find out what some of that's like by comparison, because now we're, both characters are on the toxic level. So that's the music. It's not as sharp, and these are playing at exactly the same volume as well. Remember that. We're just so used to that Mega Drive version, and this is nothing to do with the audio output. They're being um, played out in exactly the same fashion, but for some reason, the SNES version, those sound effects, have got less of a smack. There's just less going on. But overall, it's still a fantastic game, and it's got, I don't know what this enemy is on the uh, Mega Drive version here. Strange by comparison, and also, this Terminator that will not die at the hands of Robocop there with the Air 209 gun. But that has been these two games, Robocop vs Terminator for both the Snares and the Mega Drive. How they both fare, who's to say? But me personally, you know, now, many, many years on, I think I'd go for the Snares version. I think the Snares version for me is better. It has a better uh, narrative, obviously, as discussed, but moreover, it just seems a more engaging game. It isn't just about the plot, but because of the pace of the game, I actually find it more tactical and I get to be a little bit more um, apprehensive about my attack strategies. Yes, in this um, Mega Drive version we're looking at, we've got invincibility enabled, but it's still nevertheless, I do find that the Mega Drive version was very just go crazy shooting all over the shop, whereas the SNES version not only brought an element of strategy and narrative, but generally a sense of playability and reward that you didn't get on the Mega Drive. Every level started to feel the same on the Mega Drive, unfortunately, and I think of the two, the SNES has aged a great deal better. But perhaps you disagree with me. Why not go in the comments and let me know? Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see another game on the comparison pages here, why not let me know in the comments? But otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Cheerio.